Today I want to look at a nice denesting problem for a cube root, and inside that cube root is a square root. So in particular, we'd like to denest the cube root of 7 plus 5 times the square root of 2. And what do I mean by denesting this? Well, these kind of denesting procedures follow the following general rule. If you can write them with instead of nested radicals, but with unnested radicals, then they should have the following kind of simplified form. So here I've kind of exchanged my special numbers for more general numbers. And you could exchange these roots for more general roots if you wanted to. So here we have the cube root of a plus b square root c. Hopefully denests like capital A plus B square root C, where these are the same C's. And this is, of course, where A and B are rational numbers. If they denested as irrational numbers, well, maybe that would be interesting, but it wouldn't be quite the beautiful result that we're looking for. Now, you might say, well, is something broader happening, or what's the big idea here? Well, if we can take this number right here and denest it as a plus b times the square root of 2, where a and b are rationals, then indeed what we've done is shown that this 7 plus 5 times the square root of 2 is a perfect cube in this kind of enlarged field of rational numbers where we have adjoined the square root of 2. And I think maybe the broad takeaway here, if you want like a takeaway that's more than just we did some nice arithmetic would be that the perfect cubes in the field q adjoin root 2 are not obvious. Okay, so all of this said, let's maybe do the calculation that will denest this cube root. Okay, so let's take the cube root of 7 plus 5 times the square root of 2 and assume that we can hopefully write it as a plus b times the square root of 2. And since we've got this kind of broader idea up here that this is actually showing that 7 plus 5 root 2 is a perfect cube, that means that this denesting procedure is probably not available all of the time because not everything that you can think of like this is a perfect cube in Q adjoining root 2. Okay, so anyway, now we're going to cube both sides of this equation so that we can get rid of this cube root. But then notice when we cube, we'll still only have a square root of 2 term. That's because when we square it, we just have 2. And when we cube it, we have 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, so anyway, in the end, we have 7 plus 5 times the square root of 2 equals a cubed plus 3 times a squared times b times the square root of 2. And then the next one will be plus 6 times a times b squared. So that's like 3 times a times b times the square root of 2 squared, which gives us b squared times 2. And then finally, plus 2b cubed times the square root of 2. And that comes from cubing this guy right here. Now, next, we're going to use the fact that the number 1 and the square root of 2 form a basis for q adjoin root 2 over the rational numbers. That means we can equate the just plain numbers, the rational numbers, on each side of this equation, as well as the coefficients of the square root of 2. So that takes this single equation into a system of two equations with two unknowns. So in particular, we'll have a cubed plus 6ab squared equals 7. And then we'll also have 3a squared b plus 2b cubed equals Five. So this is from the peach colored equation right here. So let's maybe note that. That's this one. And then this is from the green colored equation over there. But now what I'd like to do is turn these into a single equation. And I can do that by multiplying this first one by 5. And then multiplying this next one by negative 7. And then adding them. Or maybe just multiplying by 5 and then multiplying by 7 and then subtracting. So let's see what that leaves us with. So that's going to leave us with something like 5a cubed. And then next we'll have minus 21a squared b. So I'm doing it in a certain order so that I have a decreasing powers of a. 
and then let's see, plus 30 a b squared, and then finally minus 14 b cubed. And then we have all of that is equal to zero. But now notice that that equation being equal to zero is equivalent to the polynomial equation 5x cubed minus 21x squared plus 30x minus 14 equals zero, where, let's see, we have x equals a over b. So you might say, well, how can we go from one of these to the other? Well, if we just divide this entire equation by b cubed, then we'll get this equation. You might say, well, what happens if b is equal to zero, but b is not equal to zero? Because it's fairly easy to show that this is an irrational number, which means it has an irrational component over here on the right-hand side. But now looking at this, we can think about how do we find roots of cubed polynomials and maybe the best way to do that is with the rational root theorem. So we might kind of guess our first rational roots. Let's notice that the possible roots will be x equals plus minus 1, x equals plus minus 2, x equals plus minus 7, and finally x equals plus minus 14. But then it turns out that the number 1 is actually a root of this and we can see that pretty easily. Notice that we have 5 plus 30 is 35, minus 21 minus 14 will give us zero. So that means that one is a root. But if one is a root, then we can factor out x minus one. And then if we factor out x minus one, we can guess and check to get the quadratic polynomial that's left over. So we'll definitely need a five x squared term to start off, and we'll definitely need a plus 14 to end it off. So how do we know that? Well, that's because we have a 5x cubed here and a negative 14 here. Now we just have to massage this middle number so that we get these two cross terms. And it's not a big leap to see that we need negative 16x. So let's just make sure that makes sense. So x times negative 16x will be negative 16x squared minus a 5x squared gives us negative 21x squared. So we're good to go there. And then furthermore, negative 1 times negative 16 will be positive 16 x and then let's see we need to add 14 x which gives us 30 x so again we're good to go there so now we can check that this guy right here this quadratic polynomial has no real roots so that's important because we really just want rational roots and definitely this thing on the left hand side is a real number so that means this thing on the right hand side needs to be a real number so since we have no real roots that means that this whole thing being equal to zero means that x must be equal to one but notice if x is equal to one we have a is equal to b but now we can throw a is equal to b up into these two equations and we'll see that that very quickly gives us a equals b equals 1 which means we can denest our original object which is the cube root of 7 plus 5 times the square root of 2 as 1 plus the square root of 2 and that's a good place to stop.